Hello, everyone. Um, I, I hope you're all having a great, uh, great day and uh, good evening to all of you. Uh, my name is Praveen Umanath. Uh, I'm part of the product team at uh, BrowserStack. And I'm really excited today to um, host the third edition of Browser, BrowserStack Originals uh, with our co-founders, uh, Nakul, Ritesh, and our head of people, uh, Jerry Menenzas. Uh, before we get started uh, with our introductions, uh, we're just going to do a couple of icebreaker exercises. So um, the team's going to be showing a couple of polls uh, on the Zoom link. Uh, if you could uh, just take a minute to answer those questions and uh, we'll see what, what people say. Uh, so the first one is, uh, when did we host the first uh, edition of Brad Stack Originals? I think you have three options there. Um, and uh, the second one that's going to come up after that is going to be this is a tough one. How many colors does the browser stack logo have? Second one is easier. Second one is easier. <laughs> Actually, while those questions are being answered, uh, maybe Ritesh uh, like what was the inspiration behind the behind the logo, Ritesh? Uh, so it was very funny. So we were looking for a logo which was um, uh, because we were doing browsers, and if you look into all the browser logos, they're round. Mm -hmm. And um, we wanted to present something which probably is an amalgamation of all the browser logos. It was funny, like back then. And this is the most colorful yeah. I can find on a Google search. <laughs> um, and someone who made a logo and was willing to sell with all the exclusive rights and everything. So, nice. Uh, nice. Awesome. And by the way, I got a message from this person a couple of years back huh. uh, that, hey, look, I made this logo for you. Oh, wow. Really? Yeah. Oh. He connected with me on LinkedIn and I had a conversation oh, with him. Nice. Wow. Awesome. Great. So uh, the responses are trickling in. So when did we host the first uh, originals? Uh, most of you have got this right. Uh, it was the 13th of October, 2020. And uh, how many colors does the browser stack logo have? The answer is... <laughs> <laughs> okay. So... A majority have said seven. The correct answer is 11. 11, 11 colors. Yeah. No, I, I remember the first originals very well. It's close to my heart. It's not because of the date. I know it was <laughs> pandemic, but it was at my own. It was my house. So that, that's, that makes it special for yeah. me. Yeah. Awesome. Great. So uh, let's get started. Uh, just a few housekeeping pointers before we do. Uh, we are recording this webinar uh, and we'll be sharing this link with all of you. Uh, and we'll also be publishing it on our YouTube channel. Um, we will be taking questions. So there is a Zoom Q&A button um, and uh, just feel free to put in your questions throughout the session. And we will save 15 minutes at the end of the session uh, to answer as many, 15, 20 minutes to answer as many questions as we can. All right. Uh, and we'll also be muting everyone uh, during this webinar so that uh, interruptions are, are kept to a minimum. All right, great. So let's get started. Uh, let me just do quick introductions. Uh, so Ritesh Arora is our uh, co-founder and, and CEO of BrowserStack. Uh, he helps lead the strategic vision and direction uh, for BrowserStack. Uh, under Ritesh's leadership, BrowserStack has uh, become the leading testing platform and uh, helps companies like Tesco, Shell, uh, Discovery, NVIDIA, and 50,000 plus companies around the world uh, deliver software at speed. Uh, Ritesh is a serial entrepreneur who loves solving complex problems and I think uh, one of those complex problems led to the inspiration for Browser Stack. Uh, and uh, uh, basically, Ritesh and Nakul, uh, who co founded the company, were trying to test a website. Uh, and uh, at that time, IE 11 was one of the most popular browsers. And uh, they were building on a Mac and they couldn't test uh, the website on IE. And it took them longer to test the website than actually to build the website. And that sort of was the inspiration for them to start Browser Stack um, over 10 years ago now. So uh, it's a great, great founding story. Uh, Nakul Agarwal is our uh, co-founder and, and CTO of BrowserStack. Um, he leads all of our technology strategy and vision. Uh, Nakul is also a serial uh, entrepreneur and technologist, um, has worked with Ritesh and they've built multiple cutting edge companies together. Um, and, uh, you know, Nakul has led the development and scale of BrowserStack, uh, you know, from the first thousand customers to 50,000 plus customers today. Um, and we run over 2 million tests today on our platform uh, daily uh, across our 17 globally distributed data centers. And uh, lastly, but definitely not the least, uh, Gerald, or Jerry, as we call him uh, at BrowserStack, uh, is a seasoned uh, HR and business leader. He leads our people function. Um, and he has over 25 years of experience. Uh, he's got a decorated career. He used to work, actually, I think, one floor up uh, at Samsung, uh, yes. or a few floors up at Samsung in the same building. Uh, he's also worked at Juniper and IBM. 
Uh, so yeah, I'm really excited to have all of you today uh, you. For, for the panel discussion. Uh, so let's let's get started. I think uh, Ritesh will will start with you. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think the first question is really: uh, Could you give us maybe a brief overview of where where Browse Stack stands today? <laughs> sure, Praveen. By the way, you gave a very good overview uh, indirectly, but I'll try to keep it very simple. Um, in a nutshell, uh, Browser Stack is a global uh, testing software testing company, um, uh, which believes in making innovative technology products. Uh, that's I'm trying to keep it as dummified sure. as I can. Sure. Um, and uh, we we serve fifty thousand plus uh, customers worldwide across one thirty five countries. Uh, we have over a million active developer base, um, and um, we are a very fast growing organization. Uh, just during the pandemic, we have grown from like three hundred people to over thousand people organization now, and, it, and it's been an amazing experience. Like. Uh, when we started Browser Stack, we never thought about, hey, it's going to be a thousand people company. It just looks huge. Um, and um, and I think uh, just kind of now double clicking into exactly what we do, just to probably explain everyone. Sure. Um, so we all know like every company is becoming a software company. Um, and we have seen more of it during the pandemic um, where uh, there's just been an explosion of like uh, digital economy uh, because the physical economy almost came to a halt. Mm. Right? But that's a part of a longer term trend where um, in probably next 10 to 15 years, uh, more than half of the global economy is going to be a digital economy, right? And at the same time, uh, we have 6 billion digital users worldwide, right? And every digital user has their own environment. So what does it mean? Like, so you have I'm using an Android phone made by Samsung. I have a particular operating system, a particular network environment. I use it from a location and so on. So everyone has their own unique footprint uh, of how they access the digital economy. And that's where we come into the picture. We help developers worldwide um, to make applications, whether it's mobile applications, uh, browser-based like websites, uh, to serve a uniform, amazing experience to all these 6 billion digital users, irrespective of what environment they have. Got it. Right. So that's what we do as a business. Um, and, um, and yes, like uh, we are in the right place uh, and we look forward to having the business grow for the next 10 to 20 years. Awesome. Great. So I think, uh, Nakul, the next question is, is for you. I think leading off from what Ritesh was talking about, helping developers uh, build amazing applications that work with all these unique footprints, right? Uh, I think Browsack is one of the few companies, uh, you know, who is working on deep tech problems catered to developers, solving problems for developers. Uh, in your opinion, like what has the, how has the developer tool ecosystem evolved over time and, and where do you see it going uh, a decade from now? So I think how has it evolved over the last uh, few years or last 10 years and my journey, uh, my exposure to all the customer care spoken to and stuff. I think these developers have become a decision maker mm -hmm. in, uh, uh, in most of the companies. Uh, so that's been a huge change. So developers need to like the product they are going to use. Uh, that becomes ex extremely important. Uh, I think uh, obviously COVID helped, but last few years, everyone is extremely worried uh, worried about how we go to market faster. Mm. And we saw it on COVID with citation because it again is everyone is like, I need to be online, right? I need to have a presence online. I need to uh, solve problems digitally. Digital transformation is a common. It was there earlier as well, but this has become extremely common in all my customer conversations. So uh, going to market fast, agile development, automation testing, how do I reduce all the blockers from customer commit, from engineering commit to production? That is extremely important. And uh, uh, that's, uh, I suppose, the two big trends I've seen, uh, uh, at least in the last few years. And uh, forward looking, I don't know, I probably, I don't, not a good guy at imagination, but the, just the journey wise, you move from using uh, Blackberry hard keyboards to touch, uh, where, like everything works over touch, or whether it's an iPhone or an uh, iPad and stuff like that. And then Start using voice a lot more, uh, mm. Alexa's and uh, these, and I think we'll probably move a lot more of that. Uh, so everything will should work via voice sooner or later. And then I believe AI may seems like I, I find it very very inspirational. Uh, but maybe that's the world we are living in a multiverse. Maybe yeah, sure, got it. Which agree is a value proposition for us, I guess, as well because we'll have a lot more fragmentation. Right, right, got it. Awesome, great. Uh, so okay, so the next question, uh, Jerry, is is for you. Uh, uh, you know, we talked about where Browstack is and, and where we see the developer ecosystem um, heading. 
and as someone who's joined relatively recently uh, yeah, in the yeah. in the last year uh, to browse stack uh, you know this is a unique company we spoke about you know focusing on developers and building right. deep tech problems deep tech problems what has struck you about browse stack's culture as you know something that's unique uh, about this company and the way we work so praveen uh, before i start answering the question thank you for the lovely introduction uh, <laughs> that said uh, i also need to call out i think i've been exceptionally lucky to have in you know gotten this opportunity uh, to be a part of this journey uh, it's been a, an awesome 15 odd months uh, what clearly stands out i think uh, is i think the ability to solve real problems uh, and i'm seeing this so clearly here right uh, there is no frills attached you identify a problem and you solve it and then you solve it at scale hmm. and it's like dna you don't get reminded it's like you wake up and you do it uh, two i think uh, the agility uh, in which we operate as an organization right um, is something worth watching it is inherent like you are living it uh, what clearly stands out and i think that is uh, again a credit uh, to both ritesh and nakul and everybody who's kind of come together to build this organization is the brilliance and the intellect that you have in this organization amazing brilliance amazing intellect and i think there is no other way you could have gone about solving the problem that we do right uh, finally i also want to kind of kind of call out that we have a set of core principles um, what i see very different here is you are living those hmm. uh, the core principles very clearly define the how part of it uh, you don't need to remind it and i think again credit Uh, to that for that goes to the way we have hired people right uh, we have hired very very competent people but i think we have also hired people who so strongly align to the how part of it the how do we do things and that's how you see the core principles being lived day in and day out i think that's my take on it for great no i think hiring is a great point and i think we'll yeah. cover that little later on uh, in our discussion <clears throat> great so let's move on now uh, we talked a little bit about what bro stack how brastack is doing today uh, and the current state of things let's go on to the next five years let's talk a little bit about the future uh, so okay. so ritesh the, the next question is for you uh, how are you planning for the next level of growth you know we've sort of grown now 1000 employees uh, 4 billion dollar valuation uh, what next and and how are you planning for that growth yeah so uh, i think it's kind of um, uh, having a focus and implementation of uh the vision i just mentioned beforehand that we want to probably help the developers to build an amazing digital economy in the future um to that i think the first thing that we are focused on is uh make a global testing platform um we want to see that every product that we use is probably tested on browser like platform before it's kind of delivered to end users mm. um and to that we would be expanding our product portfolio i think we are almost thinking of like blitz scaling in that direction now um uh, so that's kind of like one direction for us uh, then the other one that we are thinking we have a million uh, active developer base but there is a lot of opportunity for us to grow there can we get to 10 million active developer base in the next 5 years um and the third one is that while we get a lot of developers we make products we don't lose sight of like ultimately we are here to probably grow our revenue mm. um so uh can we get to a billion dollars revenue and beyond in the next 5 years so that's kind of like the next what 5 years looks like because interesting so uh you know going short going off of that right uh you know the tech space with switch knuckle covered a little bit has evolved quite a bit right um what are your thoughts on you know sort of the entire not not just technology but the business environment around the tech space and and how it's changed uh, over the last few years Yeah, yeah. So don't get me sorry. Like, so, <laughs> that's quite um, wrong. Yeah, that's that's a that's a that's a topic of discussion. Every roundtable you get into nowadays, yeah. like uh, that's that's the topic of gossip. But I'd probably summarize my kind of insights, and and this is like after talking to almost like fifty plus people in the last few months. Um, I think the the digital transformation or a digital economy that's getting built up that will continue to happen. yeah pandemic was a bit of a blip on the positive side mm. um but the 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 trajectory is still the same sure right which is good for our business uh, that we have a runway of next 20 years to grow the business as well right um 
Uh, and that's true with like most of the other tech companies and software companies. Um, the, the second one is there is insane amount of like money being pumped into the system, um, which probably has inflated everything around this. Um, companies that shouldn't have get funded in the first place are getting funded. You have an idea and you are like, Hey, this is the idea I have. This is my background. And mm. that's your seed round worth $20, $30 million business, which never used to happen like just three years back. Right. Uh, companies that probably should have been valued at like 10x are probably getting valued at 100x. Um, I think that madness is going to end. Hopefully, I hope it ends. It will mm. probably like help us create a better uh, set of companies. Um, and just this inflation or uh, let me put it like inflated valuation and too much money into the system has made it really difficult to hire people mm. um, uh, because the supply of people in the tech ecosystem was relatively growing about 10% year on year and the demand suddenly has grown 100%. Sure. Um, and that just makes it difficult to probably retain people, hire quality talent, invest in them. So I hope this madness end one and ends one day. Got it. No, but it's going to be it's going to be tough next few years. Yeah, yeah, makes sense. So let's let's I think uh, naturally moving on from that was around our fundraising round. So Knuckle, you know, uh, what what were some of the key reasons uh, you know why Browstack raised a Series B uh, sure. last year? Uh, so uh, I think the most important was uh, like the test about the our product roadmap and what's next one right to ask up here. I think we wanted to make sure we reset our value and in this path if we need to make some acquisitions, we have enough uh, uh, I think the uh, availability of funds to go and uh, go all bonkers into that. Mm -hmm. uh, the second one, I suppose, for all of our old employees and stuff, so some wealth creation probably becomes a part of this process. Uh, and uh, I think the last, not the least, I think we had an amazing uh, journey with our, uh, I think, Excel guys who were part of the Series A round, and we thought, why not get more experience on board with the first guide as we scale more aggressively towards sure. billion dollar, a billion dollar billion dollar so just adding to that for everyone as a context, right? So we are a profitable company. Um, uh, we don't go into the market kind of like just raising primary capital again and again because we want to grow. Like we are self-sufficient. We have been like that from the beginning. Uh, but probably the motivation for kind of fundraise was the three reasons Nakul sure. mentioned. Yeah. Well, makes sense. Got it. So let's let's move on to, I think, very like a very interesting topic, right? Which is around hiring. You talked about how hard it has become to hire uh, and, and Jerry also talked about some of the really high standards that we have at Browser Stack uh, and the kind of talent we're able to get. So I'm going to break this up into two parts. I think the first part is around the zero to one journey for Browser Stack, right? Uh, looking back, uh, Ritesh, you know, uh, what were some of the learnings uh, from, from the early days of building uh, and hiring, let's say, the first 100 people? Uh, cool. Yeah, I'll come to that. But just before that, I think it was interesting. Jerry came in 15 months back. And it's like, what is really going on here? Like attrition is off the roof. Hiring is so difficult. And then you guys want to blitz scale. You want to hire so many people. Like <laughs> that is an amazing experience. Right? <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, going back to your question, right? So uh, the first hundred employees, like I think um, uh, it's it's been a huge change. Uh, we have done a lot of mistakes hiring people early on. Uh, but now if I have to look back, uh, what I would probably hire people for, I think the number one would be like the cultural alignment, right? You just need to have fun working with someone. Mm. Um, they, and everyone wants to learn, grow. Um, it, sh it, it should be like really a strong bonded team that you need to build. Uh, the second one I would look into like people who are team players. I think we did that mistake. Um, uh, you need to create a culture of team like uh, so everyone works together um, the third thing that i would look into is uh, 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 people who probably want to stay long uh, mm. because uh, companies or startups are just not for one year two year three years eventually if you become successful you want to probably build this company for next 30 years so and companies ultimately like people and you invest in them and they return it back to the company and help it make it big so um, and the last one I would look into like uh, people who are problem solvers mm -hmm. and are very open to being in a very chaotic environment sure. uh, because early days, things are changing. Like every day it's different. You solve one problem, it didn't work. You have to move on to the next one. 
So I think those are the ingredients I look for. Great, great. So that's the first part of the journey. Uh, I think, so knuckle the next part of the journey, which is, you know, you've gone from zero to one. Now we're going from one to 10. Uh, you know, what, what have been some of your lessons, right? As sure. you've sort of scaled over the last few years. Just to, I think, just going back. Sorry, I didn't want to do sure. that. Uh, I think we hired really great people in the early yeah, journey. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think we didn't know how to nurture. Like, we were also new to this journey. So, we knew how to nurture them well. At least to my first learning, I think before scaling the organization, I need to learn how to scale myself. Hmm. I don't think I did a phenomenal job there. And if I could have done that, I would have a lot more people, obviously, from the first thing. And... Uh, uh, would have scaled obviously much better as well. Uh, so that's the first one. I think scaling yourself. The second would be scaling, uh, knowing when to scale. And uh, I think we emphasize a lot more on how to scale, but the important piece is when to scale. Mm -hmm. I think so that becomes an extremely important learning. Uh, third, I would say, as you get, uh, I think you need to have very good amalgamation of your old employees and new employees. So the culture, which probably both Jerry and Ritesh emphasized a lot more on, gets filled by people who know. I sure. and Ritesh are not necessarily the people, right? People like you who have been with the organization for so long knows how the organization works and how do we make it more successful. Uh, how do we help them? See? Some of them, obviously, you get Jerry who knows it, how to do it, been there, done that. But how do I make a, a Praveen or someone else more successful and scale the organization? I think that becomes an extremely, should spend a lot more time on those things, which I didn't do in my earlier journey and probably that's why I lose some people. But now I'm extremely more careful about those. Uh, and I think it's difficult because you don't want to give strong feedback to your rock star, uh, but extremely important for him to be successful sure. in his experiences. And I would say that's probably the third one. Uh, culture is extremely important. I think on emphasizing on culture, uh, making sure that behavior is what behavior is rewarded and what is not. I think that's more standard. Everyone does it, but uh, I didn't realize the importance of it uh, <laughs> for quite long. Uh, and the last, uh, but not the least would be, uh, uh, I think, how do we figure out of adaptation of new people coming in? Uh, I think a lot more emphasis needs to be done on onboarding. I think initially we had a, like when you were a small team, you're like, this is the laptop. This release needs to go today. <laughs> Let's get on to work on it. Right? <laughs> and that's how we operate it. Uh, but as you start hiring, I think at scale, you need know, to make sure they understand the company, what the onboarding is defined. And a lot more effort goes into uh, documenting things, uh, which I didn't appreciate as an engineer. I believe my code is my documentation. I don't need to write any documentation. Uh, it's changed as I scale. Like I need to document more. I need to build a culture of documentation. It also gives a lot of clarity to me. Like uh, what they are going to present to me or to in a wider group, it's just a lot more clear to write mm. down. Uh, so the scaling becomes a lot more. It's not very impromptu. I did do this. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, that's interesting. Like I, I, anybody new who joins, one of the first things they say is like, it's amazing how well you've documented everything on Confluence, right? Like all of us, you know, I think you and Ritesh have done a great job of instilling that in us, that everything is documented clearly. And yeah, really yeah, that, that's a very important ingredient of scaling up rapidly. Um, you don't have to reinvent the wheel again and yeah. again, and it empowers the entire organization to build. Yeah. It doesn't matter which part they're contributing. Awesome. Great. Um, the last uh, sort of question on, on uh, oh, sorry, Jerry, a question for you on, on uh, you know, how, how we've sort of expanded and scaled, right? I think uh, about a year and a half ago, I think we made a decision to go remote remote first as a company, right? Uh, which is a huge decision. Uh, so perhaps you could tell us a little bit about what does it mean? What does remote first mean? Um, and also help us understand how did we decide to do this? Um, uh, you know, what was sort of the decision-making parameters and why? Just before Jerry answer, I think for people who don't know, me and Ritesh were like headstrong against. Like we are like we're working on and we are seeing that yeah, journey all yeah. the time. Like we <laughs> will only work from office. We believe in working from office and together and you learn and you get a lot of energy when you work together with people. And the learning, I was like, how will I learn if I'm remote? Right? So that was a really hard pushback to Jerry. When, whenever he'd come back to the case, remote is an option. I was like, remote is not an option. Just remove it. <laughs> uh, so, but yeah, Jerry, <laughs> Thank you for that context. Uh, for me, awesome question. I also want to let you know and the team audience know that it was not just Ritesh and Nakul who were like pro office users, right? They wanted to work from office. I am a classical school guy, right? So I also want to work in office. So here's a group of three people who actually came together and created something which is very unique. We've heard about remote first uh, in other organizations, you know, but it's, it's mostly theoretical. So what we did, I believe was the first real, genuine, authentic remote first. Mm. And here's how we did it. By the way, before I move to the remote first, uh, I also want to know, uh, want the team to know 
the remote first decision was an outcome of something called project pluto and why we named it pluto was to create something where no human had gone before <laughs> nice. <Okay. laughs> so that's where the project pluto thing came up uh, the leadership has been speaking about it i think since since april uh, of last year uh, the discussions were around how do we is life going to be the same post pandemic i think we all concluded it is not going to be the same uh, people are are used to do uh, to do different things uh, their priorities had changed uh, but our commitment to our customer had not changed right that had to be delivered our inherent dna to innovate could not have been compromised so how do you keep all of that alive right so the leadership came together and i think in about a month month and a half time we realized our competitive advantage is our people right and everything that we had to do build this organization was around our competitive advantage which is again our people right so the questions were about how do we make work how do you work from where do we work how do we get things done mm. how do we deliver to our customers uh, commitments right um, so it was more about as a community where do you work from uh, it was a very interesting discussion right it was a learning all the way till i think the morning in which we decided we will go remote first it was still a learning we didn't <laughs> i don't think we were signed up till that morning only at 9 9:30 in the evening i think just before we headed into the board meeting we said we are remote first and that's where ritesh's message came he said i am alive <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, it was it was it was so such a drastic move and i was like guys let's just sleep over this we slept over it once no 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 let's do it again <laughs> right so we we probably thought mulled over it thought over it sure. again and again and again before we probably came to a decision yeah, yeah. No, so i can't explain. i went for a, like we did a on site head and just right 10 people were on my table like the old yes. for the new ones and i asked them what's the most important decision you believe important or innovative decision you believe you have taken three of them answered remote i remote. couldn't imagine <laughs> ever remote for us and we remote but i think i think it's been an interesting journey there was a lot of research done Uh, but we stayed true to our purpose we did not want to compromise the purpose why browser stack was created we did not want to relegate the importance that people play in that journey and i think together we came to a conclusion saying we will go remote first clear uh, decision uh, i still see in the ecosystem organizations grappling with whether we should bring people back to office or not my advice to all of them first decide and align on what is your purpose everything else will fall in place hmm. right if you are true to your people you will arrive at decisions very quickly and again an authentic decision gets adopted very very quickly i think the challenge for us is not done yet uh, i think the challenge is how do we continue to retain that culture enhance that culture right going from 300 pre pandemic to 1100 today uh, has been a beautiful journey right it's it's created a new persona within the organization but how do you hold that culture how do you enhance that how do you uh, enhance the browser stack way of working i think that's something that we still continue sure. to work on the good part is our people are with us on that journey yeah yeah, yeah. and and i'll add to that it is uh, i still remember it quite vividly like uh, so we did all this work and like as you said like we probably like document things very well we research things we think about things and we solve problems right so we literally started ground zero and so when we actually sent a pre-read to the board and it was an important decision like the board was shocked how guy, how you guys can think about like something completely different mm. and we were expecting a lot of pushback discussion and to our surprise nothing happened and the only question was Hey, we have never seen research like this, and like collectively, our board members probably sit on over like sixty companies. Hey, can we use this for our other portfolio <laughs> companies? And and that was, I think, amazing. Like the the level of research we did yeah. and the depth uh, was pretty good. Yeah, yeah. The output from that project Pluto was amazing. Like awesome. it just made made the decision making so so much. I mean, it's still a difficult decision, but it made it easier. Easier. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We had passed it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. Okay so uh, I think the last question on hiring right I think uh, Jerry you spoke about like you know how difficult it is to maintain that culture or like how much extra we have to work given that we are remote first 
and and Ritesh, you know, you, a few months ago, you sort of shared a really nice framework. I thought on on hiring, uh, and and you know, what are the things that we look for uh, as a company? Um, could you share a little bit about you know your your thoughts around the framework that you shared with us? Yeah. Yeah, sure. I think you want that framework. I said your framework now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, so I want to make my secret framework public here. So um, yeah, I think it was uh, uh, probably like the, the new framework that probably is my current version of hiring framework came from like two things. One. Um, I think the need to build this company for a long period of time. Um, and the other one, probably talking to a lot of other founders, CEOs, uh, and probably uh, industry experts who have scaled the organization. So it's it's probably a collective knowledge mm -hmm. from many other people. Um, I, I think now I probably look into five factors. Um, and th the number one would be like uh, the alignment and loyalty. So, as I said, like alignment is important, culture, vision, business, how we do things. And are you going to work with us for 10 years and beyond? Because we are here to build this organization for the next 30 years. Um, the second one is stay hungry, stay foolish. Like I'm a big fan of that statement by Steve Jobs. And if you want to build an organization for long term, the world is changing ra rapidly. Your role is going to change. So the most important ingredient is that you'll keep learning, mm. keep growing. And to make that happen, you have to keep your ego aside and be as humble and grounded as it gets. Um, the, the, the third one, um, so, so the first two are probably like, we used to look into it, but now it has become like must have. Um, and then I would say like, just as a, I can't get this out of my chest, but I still look into bare minimum intellectual horsepower mm. when I hire people. I think previously we wished to look into it a lot more, but now I feel like just a minimum benchmark is good enough um, because ultimately it's not that one individual that's going to make a difference. It's like the collective strength of a thousand people or a mm. lot more or a small team coming together is going to make a difference. Um, then the fourth one uh, is the growth mindset. That's important. Um, doesn't matter how big you as a company become. You always need to have that startup and a growth and a young mindset. Uh, you always want to think about how do I grow faster? How do I probably innovate? Um, and the last one is experiences and skill. I think mm. this is the most tricky one. And I think uh, becomes very delusional to a lot of people. Uh, when you're a founder early days, you're like, oh, this person knows a lot. I've never seen this before. I can learn so much that probably becomes like a short-term hiring. Sure. And it just blinds you looking into other factors. Uh, now I think we probably have grown over that, you know, probably the bump. And yes, it's important, but that's kind of like what you know now or what you bring on the table now. Now I think about, hey, what are you going to be in the next five years or 10 years? Right. So, so that's that's probably those five factors. Sure. Uh, no, that's a great... Great from I think it really helped all of us also as 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 people who are hiring to just distill our thoughts and and evaluate candidates. So it's great, awesome. Um, so we I think we have about ten minutes left. So um, I'd like to end with some closing thoughts uh, from from each of you. So Jerry, if we could start with you, uh, you know, again um, as as head of the people org and relatively new to browse tag, what have been some of your uh, sort of findings in terms of what makes somebody successful at browser stack? What are the key attributes of, of folks who've succeeded at browser stack? What makes somebody successful at browser stack? So, so here's my view. Um, I've just been here about 15 months. Uh, I see 1,100 entrepreneurs at work, right? 1,100 entrepreneurs at work, uh, completely engaged, very focused. And when you have that caliber of people, ownership is never an issue, mm. right? People take ownership. That's what being an entrepreneur means. Uh, it also uh, very clearly uh, creates a picture where individuals are so focused on resolving problems. Uh, people don't talk about problems. People don't talk about challenges that they run into. Uh, you know, you pick up a challenge and you're solving it, right? Uh, and this is probably one of the most diverse organizations, right? Uh, be it in terms of uh, cultures, be it in terms of 
the backgrounds of people, the experiences, exposures people have had, right? But yet, you have that diversity come together and create something so new, so beautiful, right? I think that stands out. People's ability to work with mm. uh, different people. Some of the things that I believe I have seen. Again, I also believe uh, individuals who love doing something new every day, I think will naturally get attracted uh, and join this community. I call browser stack more a community than company, right? A company has probably a shorter purpose, but a community has a more genuine, more meaningful purpose. So uh, that's where it is. And I ask people, right? When was the last time that you did something for the first time? And if you ask that question in browser stack, I think you will have people raise their hands every single day. Yeah. <laughs> That's where we are. Yeah. No, and I think, uh, I mean, I can relate to that very strongly because, uh, you know, I've been asked to do so many different things at browser stack. Uh, and it's been fun. Like every day is like something new where you can't Google an answer. You can't like look up something on Stack Overflow if you're a developer. Like the problems we're solving are genuinely first time problems. And, you know, that, that feeling, okay, I'm, excited to wake up today and go to work. I think that's never changed. And I think that's, that's what keeps us going. So so completely aligned, Praveen. I think it's like a test or a one-day opener, right? You could score a century the previous day. The next day is a fresh start. Yeah. And you're looking <laughs> forward to it and you're there. Yeah. 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 Okay, that's a great analogy. Awesome. Um, Ritesh, uh, mm -hmm. uh, the next question is for you. Um, to all the founders or aspiring founders out there, uh, maybe one one piece of advice. Um... Hmm. One piece of advice. Yeah. <laughs> interesting. So um, I, I would say like, might be more relevant in the current uh, scenario. I think focus on customers, their problems, solve them and solve at scale. Um, please do not focus on like how much money you are raising at what valuation. If you solve problems, do it very well for a lot of customers. I think everything else, else in foreign place. Great, yeah. That's that's yeah. Focus on the customer and the yeah. problems. Yeah. Awesome. And uh, lastly, Nakul, we'll we'll end with you. Uh, you know, from your perspective, one one piece of advice uh, to all the aspiring founders out there. I think my current uh, sort of philosophy <laughs> happened uh, last few years. I think uh, laser focus on execution. Uh, I would say we get distracted, like all of us, including founders, or even like you always have a startup, you have new ideas, new opportunities, and we should do this, we should do that. And lot of surprises everywhere in delivery. And my thing, my personal belief, and I probably will do the effort, guys could disagree a little bit, but we strongly believe in if you are committed, you have to deliver. I think working backwards from that and making sure we deliver on our commitments is probably just extremely important as a smaller, as a startup. You want to make sure you go out and market in three months, you do it at least every month so that you know that you're solving the customer problem. Otherwise, it is permanent. Yeah. Yeah. And in, in, in adding to that, like, it's, it's, a, it's a great thing. Like, what I've seen my observation, if you really hire great talent that we usually take pride in hiring at Browser Stack, like they, they, they come up with like brilliant problems to solve or opportunities or ideas. So prioritization becomes equally a lot more important uh, and then aligning everyone towards, yes, these are the top 10 things we are going to do. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, I also remember you talked about like giving yourself deadlines. Uh, you know, I think when you started Browser Stack, you guys give yourself a three month deadline and yeah, yeah, make yeah. it work. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think that's, that's a great, great learning. No, I bought time from Nakul. <laughs> he was like, what crazy insane idea is this? This is <laughs> completely weird. Like, it's like, just give me four months. Um, and it was more of a negotiation with him <laughs> to probably get it. That is one. I didn't like the idea. The <laughs> second, uh, also, I think last two, the first two started, so we did it to eight, nine months. So by that time you fail, we ended up wasting another year of that. Sure. And it becomes, you know, social, friend, family, everyone is like, you know, Zach, I what you're doing in your life, wasting your life. And, and I'm not sure how many people know, like, when Nakul means four months, you better know that it's four months. He knows. <laughs> he knows. That was like three months, fourth month, first day. If it's not a production and you don't have customers, I'm going to not write another line. Of code. <laughs> so. That's awesome. Great. Uh, so I think we're we're done with the, uh, the, the the questions that I had, but we have a lot of questions from the audience. Uh, so I'm just going to, I think we have about 20 minutes left. So we'll try to take as many questions as possible. And uh, Jerry, maybe I'll just leave the end to you. We could just talk about uh, hiring at Browse Stack and uh, tell us, tell, tell the folks attending 
where they can go to look for uh, yeah. opportunities. Perfect. All right. So let's get into Q and A. Okay. Um, first question, maybe Jerry, for you uh, is how can we become part of browser stack and what are some of the learning skill sets needed? I'm sorry, I missed the beginning. So how can any anybody who's attending this webinar, uh, how can they become part of broad stack? What are the things that we're looking for uh, in terms of skill sets or learnings? I think let me let me uh, skip the skill sets part of it. I think there are a couple of things we clearly look for. Uh, a deep desire to do something, right? Uh, a deep desire to learn. Uh, your ability to be very open, uh, very receptive to feedback coming your way. And then look at not a job. I think we look for individuals who are looking at browser stack as an opportunity. Uh, we are not here just kind of creating jobs. We are here solving a real problem. Uh, and if people can understand what that purpose is, uh, what problem are we solving? I think they have an equal opportunity of getting into browser stack very clearly. Uh, Ritesh did mention, right? Uh, we look for you know uh, uh, humility. We look for intellectual horsepower. We look for people who are uh, who are hungry. Right, uh, who are very aligned with our purpose. I think those are some of the things that we look for. Awesome. Okay. Um, second question. Um, I'm not sure who to direct this to. Uh, <laughs> if it's a hard one, Nakul. <laughs> <laughs> okay, maybe Nakul, you can take a shot at this. <laughs> <laughs> so, what is your what is what is Brasstack's view on opportunities in the area of blockchain, Web three, all of that? Uh, so uh, I think two parts to it. Uh, technology perspective, I think it's a great technology blockchain. That they, I think uh, I've probably done a little bit of research on it. Is it any of this applicable? Why my next application is not building on web and stuff? I think I didn't go to figure out uh, my way of figuring out building an application. So that is one piece of it. Is there an application of providing a testing infrastructure or a testing platform there? I think you explored blockchain earlier, but it was a little uh, more trickier to solve it because of the lot of data validation is not the space we play in. Mm. Uh, so from that perspective, we haven't picked it up yet, but uh, I think we are doing a product market with the company's project now and we'll probably look into it. Got it. Awesome. Might be a little early for us. Sure, mm. sure. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Um, Ritesh, the next question is for you. Uh, you know, you spoke uh, in the beginning about uh, building uh, a platform so developers can test for all the different user environments, right? Um, can you maybe elaborate a little bit? I think the question is basically, what are the key challenges that developers face when, when creating an app that is compatible with all the different mobile devices and models out there? Yeah, so uh, I, I, I think uh, challenges of different kinds. Um, so for example, you're probably, uh, let's say making a website, right? So uh, every browser has its own rendering engine. Um, then the screen sizes are different. Uh, like someone is using a monitor, someone is on a laptop, someone is using a mobile browser. And uh, surprisingly, sometimes your mobile browser and a desktop browser has a different engine altogether. Mm. Um, then you have browsers with different kind of versions on different operating system that make sure that the engines are also kind of sure. of different types. So I think that creates like a plethora of environments uh, which have different small, small changes. And you want to make sure your code doesn't fail in all of them. So just giving a small bit of perspective. What sure. Got it. Got it. Um, okay. Let's talk about, I think, so the next question, I think, you know, uh, is, is around uh, automation and testing, right? So we spoke about uh, digital transformation and, and sort of everybody moving to the cloud and, and moving digital. So Nakul, maybe uh, you can, you can uh, address this one is, uh, how are we sort of leveraging this move or this transformation uh, and the shift to to the cloud, right? And uh, are we are we trying out any new technologies? Uh, uh, I don't think we are. Uh, I think how are we leveraging this? I think my take on is I think this. Uh, so we have, like I said in our uh, technology vision, I think we are a very product led uh, growth company, right? So we have built product for developers, mm. and whosoever is in that journey of uh, uh, migrating to cloud, I think they obviously probably look at the tools where they focus on their business, and they let browser stack uh, use tools like browser stack to probably do the work which is already being solved. So don't repeat yours in principal engineering. I think that is the probably way we are extremely, uh, I think, bullish on and driving on. Uh, so I think that probably uh, uh, probably just for that. Cool. Oh. Um, 
Pitesh, um, this question is for you. Um, you know, during COVID, uh, many businesses face uh, challenges growing, and actually, a lot of companies had to lay off uh, folks, right? Mm -hmm. But we grew, right? We grew from 300 to 1,000 plus, right? How how did Browserstack sort of overcome those challenges that that happened during COVID that many other companies were facing, right? And how were we able to grow so so rapidly? Yeah, sure. So uh, I think first we had plans to grow rapidly. Uh, and I still remember like when COVID hit March, April, uh, 2020, uh, I think we were cautious um, that because it was a big unknown, like where mm. probably things would end up. Uh, but uh, I think the the plans to grow were still there. And after an initial blip of two, three months, I think our business was growing as well. Um, so if the business continued to grow, um, uh, we knew the market is probably coming back. Everyone is kind of setting, settling into the online digital right, world. Right. Um, and then at the same time, um, we are financially a very healthy business. Uh, so that gave us a confidence that even if it's like a, a bit of a gloomy winter for the next few months, we can easily kind of like, um, you know, get through it. So, yeah. um, and it's just, it's just, it's kind of like a matter of few months being patient around it. I think. Got it. Yeah. Um, okay. And I think, uh, maybe a question around, uh, the founding story, Nakul, um, you know, uh, how did you, when, when you started BrowStack, uh, you know, 10 plus years ago now, uh, did you recognize the potential that BrowStack or this, this product could become this big? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think when we started solving the problem, at least after, after the last two ones, we wanted to make sure two things, I suppose one, uh, is there. Would people pay for it? I didn't care how much they pay for it. And the second is there are decent enough people who had this problem. Mm. And that's what probably we validated before starting it. I had a uh, very clear, uh, both of us are implemented. These two needs to be validated before we go about solving this problem. And we had a very good playbook around what all needs to be checked. And uh, I think basically the last two things are probably 20, 30 uh, checklist items. You probably yeah, had to yeah. validate each other. And we spent a month to validate all of these things before we build it. Uh, so I would say those are the two things I didn't know, uh, and I didn't know about like how much, uh, potential. It is. Sure. So, so I'll probably add to that. That's, this is important. Like, so uh, my, what I've, I've been thinking about this last few months, um, uh, I think every two to five years, I think you will have to kind of reinvent your business. You will have some, uh, you know, external factors, the market is changing, or you will have oh shit, I was solving a smaller problem mm. and I can't grow more beyond that. I need to expand my horizon. Um, uh, so for us, we started with a really a very small problem. It's just the IE browser, right? Like you, you just can't build a large company on that. Uh, then we went to like all browsers mm. and then the market changed. Mobile devices came in, right? Um, then the test automation happened. The market changed again. Um, and now we are at a point where we know the market is going to change, but before that happens, let's expand the business because sure. we have to expand our horizon as well. So mm -hmm. it's a constant thing. Um, it's okay to start small, but you should know it that every two to five years, you'll probably have to like keep, yeah. keep reinventing yourself. Yeah. It's a great insight. Great insight. Awesome. All right. Um, Jerry, uh, this question is around going remote first. Um, could you speak to some of the problems that BrowStack or challenges that BrowStack faced while we went remote first and, you know, maybe how did we overcome? Oh, quite a few. <laughs> <laughs> we are still grappling with those. Uh, soon, I'm sure we'll crack some. Uh, first and foremost, I think uh, we were created to be an in-office organization, right? People coming together, feeling the vibes, uh, facing each other, whiteboarding, a lot of discussions, debates, right? So for an organization, like any other organization, uh, for such an organization to then go remote and continue delivering on our commitments the way we've been doing, continue delivering innovation the way we've been doing, uh, has been a challenge. Um, we are taking baby steps. We are trying to see how we can bring in people together uh, in whatever form factor, hmm. right? Uh, to continue feeling uh, what browser stack is. Yeah, I think perhaps, sorry, sorry, interrupt, but could you maybe tell us like when you, when we say remote first, what yes. do we mean? Like how is it different from full remote or um, any other first variation of, of remote? So maybe you could just but, elaborate yeah, on yeah. that a little bit. So again, this is a spe spectrum, right? Uh, uh, fully remote 
there are a few organizations that do not just have an office space. So there is no place for people to go and feel that organization, sense those vibes. Uh, and then there are classical organizations which are you know, fully in office. Uh, and then the entire spectrum is there. So we come closest to uh, fully remote. Uh, we are a remote first company, which means we will have a space where we will bring in people. People continue to work from their homes. We strongly believe, and I think it's a globally accepted phenomenon, right? Uh, that home conditions, in home conditions, you perform your best. Mm. So when people are at home, surrounded by their people in their ecosystem, you know, uh, they will give their best shot. That's where I think the remote first came in from. So as I said, fully remote is some companies, we are remote first. We bring people together at a regular cadence into office, right? Or wherever else uh, to one ensure that culture uh, continues to be ingrained deeply. People understand our core principles. People understand our way of working. And then every organization has a certain vibe, right? Mm. We want our people to experience that vibe. Because going remote first, if there is a skill screen, there is very little to differentiate between a, a Google or an IBM or a Salesforce or a browser stack. Right. right. We wanted to ensure that people feel us, people live us, and people grow with us. That's how these cadences have been designed. Got it. We've completed our first cadence. Hopefully people liked it. We continue to kind of evolve on those cadences to see how we can continue a great remote first company. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Um, <clears throat> I think, yeah, I think a couple of questions you addressed. Um, okay. Um, the next question, Ritesh, is for you. Uh, it's around competition or the market overall. I think you addressed it a little bit, but do you foresee any threats to BrowStack as a business? Uh, and what is sort of BrowStack's competitive advantage? How are we maintaining it or how are we growing? Yeah, sure. So, uh, uh, I, I think uh, we, we have been lucky in this journey that uh, we haven't had like uh, a competitors per se in this space. I think we have had like a very nice clean journey um, uh, primarily because the the R&D we have done across years or the technology we have built is so unique. Like You know it, you just can't Google yeah. search and uh, like find answers to the problem we face on a day-to-day -day basis. That's a massive investment. Um, and we are the only company which has this technology. Even the likes of Google, Amazon, their teams, they haven't figured out. Mm -hmm. um, so that gives us a, a huge competitive advantage. And while we have done that, we have been a product first company. We have built secondary advantages of a, 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 a good presence in like worldwide on over 50,000 customers, mm. a brand among developers. Like I go to my hometown and I meet people randomly who are like, hey, I use browser stack. Like um, I'm on the CEO's round table and half of the CEOs have used browser stack. So I think there is a brand, uh, people know it across the board, they have used it. Um, uh, so I think those are the other competitive advantages sure. we have built sure. across the years. Great. Okay, I think we have time for a couple more questions. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> Talked about cadences. Um, okay, um, interesting question. Um, what do we like as we as we scale? Oh, Nakul, maybe you can you can address this one. As we scale as a company, uh, how do you envision the culture of Browser Stack uh, changing or growing? Uh, doesn't change anything with respect to it. Hmm. Uh, I think obviously people uh, will have to figure out how to keep it maintained in culture at this scale, and that's probably a lot of investment is going on. And Jerry spends a lot more time thinking about it and figuring out the challenges and how do we uh, address those at scale and in a remote environment. Uh, I don't think probably culturally I won't change anything. As a scale of the organization, obviously you need to figure out where you are and what capability you need to probably get to the next level, let's say from current revenue, let's say billion dollar revenue that we spoke about. Like you might need a lot of capabilities of each other. So spending a lot more time on thinking how to build those capabilities or build those capabilities, that's probably some of the time you spend. But those are the two things I would say. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I would add to that. Like I would say like there is always a room for maturing the culture. Um but a bigger problem is like when you have grown so fast in the world of being remote. Uh, just having everyone live up to the culture 
is a far becoming a big difficult problem than just kind of like maturing the show. Sure. Yeah. Got it. Awesome. All right. Last question. And then Jerry, I'll hand it over to you. Maybe you can just talk about uh, our hiring a little bit. This is an interesting one. Um, if not browser stack, and this is addressed to both of you, what would you be doing? If you hadn't started browser stack, what do you think you guys would be doing? A lot more startup. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of ideas, right? Like, yeah, I, yeah. I think if you ask me, like now, if I'm not doing browser stack, it's interesting. Like, what I would be doing, like, I think I would be just finding like a high impact, difficult problem to solve, and I would be just kind of geeking around on how to solve that problem. Mm -hmm. Like, um, I that's like it has to be difficult it has to be challenging and the only thing additional i would add it, it has to have a big impact mm. uh, yeah. which it is i i think i'm pretty open mind sure definitely i won't be building a software again sure. <laughs> okay it's just like too many people doing it now <laughs> awesome cool i think uh i think we'll draw that to a close uh with with questions uh jerry maybe you could talk a little bit about uh our hiring uh yeah. and and where people can go to look for opportunities awesome I mean, thank you. Uh, so, so here's here's the drift. Uh, as an organization, uh, we are solving a problem that hasn't been solved before. Um, and at a time time and age where uh, you know mobile experiences are uh, increasing day in and day out, and the pandemic has actually propelled us into a space where uh, the digital adoption uh, is, has grown exponentially, uh, and the need continues to grow. Right, that's how the digital companies, uh, that ecosystem is growing. Uh, how do we enable our purpose is to have some of the finest people. Uh, I've spoken about this on multiple platforms. I think this group of 1,100 people is probably the finest that you will find in the ecosystem. You could very well be a part of it. We continue to grow uh, across uh, the Europe, uh, uh, you know, Americas, uh, as, as well as in India. Uh, there is a huge market to be captured. There is a bunch of products that we are working on. We continue to hire for product, for engineering, for marketing, for the corporate, uh, uh, you know, functions. Just in the last like 18, 24 months, probably we've gone from 300 to 1,100 and beyond. Uh, visit our website. Uh, there is a whole host of our colleagues uh, on LinkedIn. Uh, tap into those resources. Reach out to individuals. Just don't apply. It's very important for you to understand uh, we browser stack as a journey, browser stack as an experience, right? And then of course, latch on to us. Sail through our assessment process, which is not tough for brilliant individuals, for individuals who want to solve problems. And lo and behold, you're a part of browser stack. Yeah. Awesome. Join us. <laughs> <laughs> great, yeah. great. Awesome, great uh, work. I think thank, thanks, uh, Nakul, Ritesh, uh, Jerry, for for thank you. very very enlightening discussion. Uh, I think uh, we'll we'll draw the session to a close today, and uh, I'll thank you all for joining. Uh, please do go to our careers page, check out all the opportunities, browstackcom slash careers um, All of our open opportunities are listed there, and uh, reach out to us on LinkedIn. Uh, we're happy to get into calls and conversations with with anybody who's curious about uh, what's what's available. Uh, thank you again for joining. Um, we'll see you all in the next edition. Thank Have you. Have a great night. Thanks a lot.